Proverbs chapter 3. Write mercy and truth upon the tablet of thy heart. Trust in the Lord. Honor him with thy substance. Whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add, shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck, write them upon the tables of thine heart, so that so shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes, fear the Lord, and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel, and marrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance, and with the first fruits of all thy, thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Let's pause for a moment here. There's a couple of very profound things here, and very, should be, anyways, fairly well-known things. But I like that first part. Let thine heart keep my commandments. Write them upon the table of thine heart. In other words, don't just learn the law. Don't try to keep the letter of the law. Internalize it. Understand it. Make it part of your very identity. There's that very famous one. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. I think a lot of people in the modern day should take this more to heart. Too, too many people, in my opinion, want to try and prove God scientifically. They want to court the, the world, the scholarly world. And they're looking for proof of God, looking for ways of arguing God. But God, we can't understand God with our own mortal understanding. It's impossible. And we don't always understand it. And when it says, lean not unto thine own understanding, I think he's talking about that, you know, when God says we need to do something, we do it, whether we understand why or not. We acknowledge that God understands things so much better than we do, that we will follow him, trusting that he knows what he's doing. But I also like this last part here. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. In other words, pay your tithing. Be faithful in this. Pay your tithing. Verse 11. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as a father the son in whom he delighteth. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies, and all the things that canst ah, thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her. And happy is every one that retaineth her. The Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth. By understanding hath he established the heavens. By his knowledge the depths are broken up, and the clouds drop down the dew. But then that whole description of get wisdom, and all this, all, all the benefits of wisdom, better than money, better than wealth. And it's good. Getting money, how many times have people won the lottery? And then their whole life is ruined by it because they have no wisdom. And yet somebody who is wise can make a happy and comfortable life on very little. But I also like that by the Lord, by wisdom, founded the earth, established the heavens, and controls the sea. Just think of that. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom again. Remember that. But just think of how far wisdom can take you. If it is the basis of the creation, how far can you go with wisdom? Let us move on. Chapter, uh, verse 21. My son, 
Let not them depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So shall they be life unto thy soul and grace to thy neck. Then shalt thou walk in thy way safely, and thy foot shall not stumble. When thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. For the Lord shall be thy, cons- thy confidence, and shall keep thy foot from being taken. To summarize, I think this is what this is saying is that if you have wisdom and understanding and discretion, then you don't fear the future. You don't fear what's coming next because you have planned for it. But sometimes the unexpected happens. That's when we do not be not afraid of sudden fear. The unexpected might happen. Might cause a momentary uh, fear in you. It's only, I didn't expect this. What am I going to do? But don't be afraid of those moments. Because if you have wisdom, you can work your way through them. As long as you are relying on the Lord, those unexpected moments will not hinder you, will not hinder you significantly. Let's finish this out. Verse 27. Withhold not good from them to whom it is due, when it is in the power of thine hand to do it. Say not unto thy neighbor, Go, and come again, and tomorrow I will give, when thou hast it by thee. Devise not evil against thy neighbor, seeing he dwelleth securely by thee. Strive not with a man without cause, if he have done thee no, no harm. Envy thou not the oppressor, and choose none of his ways. For the froward is abomination to the Lord, but his secret is with the righteous. The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked, but he blesseth the habitation of the just. Surely he scorneth the, scor- the scorners, but he giveth grace unto the lowly. The wise shall inherit glory, but shame shall be the promotion of fools. I like that. Don't hesitate to do good. Don't, don't put off doing good. And if nobody has done you any harm, don't do any harm to them. Kind of the golden rule here. You know, do unto others as you would have others do to you. That's basically what it's saying. But it's not just that. Don't, don't wait for it either. Don't say, oh, I'll help them out tomorrow. If you are able to do it now, do it now. Now that's I like that. Don't envy the don't envy the oppressor and choose none of his ways. That's, don't look at those even somebody who looks like they're prospering. If you can tell that they are gaining what they have through wickedness, don't try to emulate them. Don't, don't follow their wickedness in order to get what they have. So it, it's very nice, very nice. And I do like that last verse: "The wise shall inherit glory." That reminds me in the Doctrine of Covenants where. Joseph Smith taught that whatever level of intelligence we attain to in this life will rise with us in the next. And the more we learn in this life, the, the more advantage we will have in the next. And that's what it seems to be saying. This is wisdom. This is intelligence. All of it's really the same thing. And if we, the more we learn of wisdom, the beginning, as again, the beginning of wisdom is, is the fear of God, but there's so much more after that. And the more we learn, the greater our advantage will be. And that's what it seems to be saying here, the wise shall inherit glory, but the fool, the shame, shall be the promotion of the fool. I like that. It's, it's, I like the way it's put. We'll see you in the next chapter.